Hi, welcome to Green Slate & Company. My name is Larry Borowski and today we're going to be talking about external thread gauge measurements. What we have to offer today is called the tri-roll gauge, which is just very systematic in performing System 22 measurements. So let's go take a look at that gauge. Here you have the basic setup for our tri-roll gauge. You've got a couple tools, some extra set of rolls, set plug, and some fasteners over here, and the gauge itself. Typically when you get this from us, you open up the box, unwrap it, it's ready to go. The set plugs there, the rolls are on the frame, and the indicators all preset, ready to go. So you just verify the preset and start measuring. But in case you have any problems or you need to change the battery or even the indicator out for any reason, I'm going to show you how to set that up from the from the get-go. So we'll start out by just resetting the memory by taking the battery out, popping that back in. That's what you're going to see if you change the battery. Essentially to get rid of that, you just hit the set button once, hit it again, and now you're, you know, you can read stuff. But what we want to do, we're measuring in millimeters right now, so we're, that's what our preset's going to be. So we want to change our units by hitting the mode button once over the millimeters. At that point, you want to hit your set button. So your little P is flashing at the top. When you see that, you hold the set button until that plus starts flashing then you let go that's you want to set that plus to a positive so you just hit the set button again you want to set that to your that zero to zero so if you want to keep that number you just hit set and it goes to the next one if you want to keep the number you hit set it goes to the next one we're measuring an m6 by one today so our go pd is a 5.324 so we want to hit mode Every time you hit mode, it's going to increase by a count of one. So we want to go to five. We want to set that number in there. Next one is 0.324. So 0.3 set. 0.2 set. And 0.4 set. When you do that, the P is going to flash again. You just want to hit set one more time and you're there. The other thing you want to make sure with tribal gauges, we get this a lot, that it's not measuring right, something's wrong. Well, that's because your reading direction is backwards. For instance, as you can see, if I pull these rolls farther apart, my numbers are getting smaller to the point where they go negative. They get closer together, they get bigger. That's not how it's supposed to be, so we have to set it up for reverse read. To do that, we just hold our mode button down and you see the direction come up. We do want to set our direction, so we hit set. And then we hit mode again to give us the down arrow. This kind of, it's either not reverse read or reverse read. When we see that down arrow, that means reverse read. We want to set it there, and then we're good. At that point, to exit the mode, you can either power it off or just hold mode down and there. So now, now when we raise it, the numbers get bigger and go closer together, numbers get smaller. So we're good there. Okay, now that our indicator is set up, essentially there, I wanted to show you some of the other features of the tri-roll gauge. Um, as you can see, let me spin it this way for you. Here's our little lever arm that I was using earlier to set, move the rolls apart and together. What you have here is this is your tri-roll. There's the name of the gauge basically three rolls approximately 120 degrees apart from each other so that they make contact at that at that circumscribed circle around there you got a couple screws that hold them in if you can look back here you've got a little stop screw that you use just a little screwdriver to turn it in and out what that does is it moves this lever down or up now, what you want to set it for is you don't want these rolls to make contact with each other. You want them to not touch because that just it's op opens them up to damage. So when you change out roll sizes and things like that, you just want to make sure that those, that's pushed down far enough so that the, the rolls aren't contacting each other. Another little thing you're going to find is back here. We can loosen this up. And this is fully swivelable to however you like. Uh, if you want to 
stand on the desk and look at it, you can do that, or lay down and kneel on the floor, you can do it like that. But what I wanted to show you is under here, if you can see down into there, there's a little adjustment screw. Essentially, it's just a flathead slotted screw. And what that does is it increases and decreases the spring tension or holding power of your rolls. So I've already set that up where I want it. Basically, we set our angle so it's nicely, nice and ergonomically friendly to us. And we can just tighten that down. Okay, now that we know a little bit about the gauge and how it works, I wanted to show you guys what we're, what we're looking at. These, these rolls you see here, those are called functional diameter rolls. What they are is they're, they're multi-ribbed. They, they aren't helixed like a thread, they're just annular grooves basically cut into a roll. So, and they're all offset to each other by a third of the pitch because we do have a third of a contact point around the circle. So, you want to also make sure that these things are all rolling nice. And what we do is we take our set plug. Typically, you're going to want to have a full form set master W tolerance. This is just a uh, truncated W tolerance set master, but we're going to use our full form section of the thread back here. So we open up the rolls, we engage our full form section, settle it in there a little bit. And then we already preset our number in there, so we want to hit the set button once. That little P will flash, our preset number will sit there. And we just want to hit the set button again to take it. Basically that inputs, it tells it right now when the rolls are spaced at that point, that's the diameter I want you to measure. So from there, we basically begin to take our measurements. Put our screw in there. We settle that, settle that in, we take a measurement. Compare that to whatever class of fit we're checking these fasteners to, and it'll tell you good or bad. It's a really quick, easy way to measure fasteners. You measure the, along the whole length. As you can see, it sure beats uh, ring gauging them up and down. First the go, all the way up, and then the no-go. Um, so it's a lot quicker. Nice thing, you got a data output. You can put that right to your computer if you wanted to. And that's uh, how to check functional diameter for a tri-roll gauge. We're going to talk about the single element pitch diameter next. Let's talk about switching rolls, and we're going to switch over to a single element pitch diameter roll set, which you'll find right here. Essentially got three rolls. Let's start out by removing what's on there. Let's take a little flat screwdriver, unscrew your screw, and these things just come right off. Continue to do that through the other two. Now, if you want to take a look at this, I don't know if you can see this properly or not, but you will find these have a little number one, number two, and number three on them. That's very important because, like I said before, we're talking three points of contact around the circle, and they're all offset to each other by a third of the pitch. So when we're putting these on, Way to remember it is two is always on top, is always in the movable, the movable arm. And then from there it goes one, two, three clockwise. So here's number three at the end of our clockwise motion, and here's number one at the beginning of our clockwise motion. Now, just real quick, the, the cool thing about the tri roll gauge is that if you have a left handed thread, but you don't have there's no such thing as left-handed rolls, and you don't have a left-handed set plug. In a pinch, you can set up your gauge right-handed, 
with the clockwise rotation on your right-handed set plug. And then all you have to do is take these two bottom rolls and swap them. That basically tips your helix angle the opposite way to accommodate your left-handed thread. So just a little tidbit of information for, for you to digest. But we'll put these back on. Now you want to always make sure that these things are spinning free on there. Because when you don't have them spinning free, you have a tendency to they have a tendency to not to bind up. And then you have your measurements aren't good, you start wearing out your, your roll set and all that other stuff. So new rolls usually need a little bit of a little bit of a quick break in, but I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of the screws back in and then we'll get set up for for our next uh, phase of this thing. If you just want to take a quick look before I do that, can you see that split in the threads? What that does is allows you to put your screw back on with some tension in there. So, because you don't want to tighten the screw up against the roll because it will bind it and not move. So. If you don't have resistance when you're screwing it in, you just put a little flat blade screwdriver in there, spread those apart a little bit. Let me go back in here. What I like to do is tighten them down all the way and then just back it off just a, just a hair. So you, the, the screws enough frictions in there so it doesn't back off with on the roll and you're spinning free. So now I'm going to go populate the rest of the rolls with the with the screws and we'll set it up with our new with our other set plug. So okay here we are back with our these are our single element pitch. These are also called type 4 rolls. So again same process the rolls are in place they're in the right orientation one two three they all rotate freely and we stick our full form section of our set plug into the rolls, settle it in. We hit our set button, which brings up our flashing P and the number we want to preset to. We hit set again to accept that number. And now we are ready to measure. So we take our fastener, set it in the groove, and we take our measurements. Again, what that does is that this set of rolls, it isolates your pitch diameter, taking away any effects of, of lead or flank angle error. Um, this is type 4 rolls, which are considered a cone and V type contact, so they're flat contacts. Other sets of rolls that might come with this unit, or you can buy as accessories, are your what's called a type 5 roll. And another name for that is your best wire size which then you're dealing with a rounded contact, just like a three wire method of measuring threads. There's also type sevens, which are minor diameter roll sets, which are very pointed to reach down into the minor. There are also type six rolls, which are major diameter rolls, or, and they're just fully smooth cylinders that contact the major diameter. And then if you get into system 23 measurements, there's all kinds of uh, combinations of those sets of rolls where you can get run out of, of PD to major and things like that. So that pretty much sums up our tri-roll gauge today. I hope it was very informative and thank you very much. Thank you for joining us today for our tri-roll gauge demonstration. If you have any questions about this gauge or any other type of gauges, you can give us a call at 817-870-8888. Uh, visit us our on our website, www.greenslatingcompany.com, or uh, shoot us an email at sales or sales1 at greenslatingcompany.com. Thank you.